Fourth topic for the second day of European Science Festival is about perception in science, technology and innovation. We have a very special lecture on this topic from a world-renowned Slovenian scientist. Uh, Professor Maria Strojnik uh, lives in Arizona in the United States of America. She is an astrophysicist. So uh, let's, let's hear her take on perception in science, technology and innovation among Europeans and Americans. Professor Dr. Maria Strojnik. Good afternoon. I would like to thank the organizers of the European Science Festival for inviting me to participate in this wonderful event. My name is Maria Strojnik. I was born and grew up in Ljubljana, Slovenia, the country that currently presides the European Union and the country who is hosting this wonderful event. My university education continued in the U US, where I live in Phoenix, Arizona. The title of my talk is Perceptions of Science, Technology and Innovation Among Europeans and Americans, and that would be some kind of comparison. Here I want to mention that the Mesopot Mesopotamian princess in Hedwana in the 23rd century before Christ was actually the first astronomer that is known to us. There exist ge geographical and political definitions of Europe. European Union includes 27 countries, and I want to mention that maps are not to scale. The US is a country organized as federation of 50 states and a district of Columbia. Additionally, the US includes sovereign nations with their own lands and their own laws they are the autochthonous people. To give the justice to the US, here is her flag and also flag of all the European countries. People are gifted by having different skills and different preparation to contribute to the community of humans. Scientists, healers and star observers have always been a small segment of humanity endowed with the ability to think and they are possessing a great deal of ac accumulated knowledge. They must pass many trials as conditions for admission to their exclusive professions. People love scientists when they save life of their child and they blame scientists for everything that goes wrong during other times. People are allowed to be emotional. Having emotions is an important dimension of the human mind. During the Age of Enlightenment, European thinkers thought that humanity could be improved through rational change. Isaac Newton reintroduced and formalized the scientific method and started the rivalry among scientists. Initially, the language of science communication was Latin. Now it has become English to a very, very high degree. In the US, all activity and, the, and industry was, and it still is, good if it is made, if it has made you well off. Well off is my euphemism for being rich. When the Puritans left England to pursue their freedom of religion, they developed thinking that the Providence loved you if you were righteous. The only way that the Providence had to show you that she loved you was to make you well off. So to be righteous was equal to being well off. One of the greatest US inventors was the polymath and also a founding father, Benjamin Franklin, even before the colonies became the states. Americans honor him by having him on the largest, that is $100 bill, which is also called Benji. I would like to share a real anecdote from the Benjamin Franklin's life about the smallpox inoculation. The smallpox, which is mostly eradicated, has caused scarves in its survivors and had 30% mortality. The concept of preventing smallpox by vaccination 
was introduced by an enslaved African, Onesimus, to colonial America in the 18th century, but the idea was not immediately accepted. By, by 1736, Benjamin Franklin, a prominent Bostonian, was known as a supporter of the inoculation. When his four-year-old son Frankie died of smallpox, opponents of the procedure circulated rumors that the child had been vaccinated and that it was the vaccine that was responsible for his death. When Benjamin Franklin became aware of this gossip, he placed a notice in the Pennsylvania Gazette stating, I do hereby sincerely declare that Frankie was not inoculated, but received the infection in the common way. The child had a bad case of diarrhea. His parents had been waiting for him to get well before having him inoculated. Unquote. I intended to have my child inoculated. End of quote. This tragedy haunted Benjamin until the end of the days. He wrote so in his autobiography. Quote, the story I mentioned for the sake of parents who omit the vaccination procedure. Fortunately for me, the European Union recently published results of a survey on the attitudes toward science. This survey was taken in April 2021, which was actually middle of pandemic. When I use their statistics, I use the e e EU symbol. Below the graph, I comment on the US thinking about the same subject. Here we see the first graph that shows responses to a specific statement. The dark and light blue columns show the percentage of respondents from each country who agree with the statement. The countries on the horizontal coordinate are arranged in a clever way. The smoothly changing curve is the demarcation between the blue and yellow rectangles, designating the absence of opinion. The most interesting information, of course, includes the extremes and the EU average indicated as the rectangles outlined in black, usually around the middle area. So the statement was, science is so complicated that I do not understand much about it. 46% of Europeans agree with this statement, while 25% appears to be indifferent. Ignorance and poor academic preparation are a worldwide problem that has an incredibly simple solution, better educational systems and more knowledgeable teachers. If people knew, for example, that the FDA, which is an agency of the US government, Federal Drug Administration, approved the first AIDS medicine in four months in the 1980s, maybe they would not be so unhappy that the current inoculations were approved about equally rapidly. The survey also included 11 knowledge questions. And the, one of the findings of the conclusion is that the respondents in Southern or Eastern European countries are less likely to correctly answer the knowledge questions. So the US also has an educational system with a large outcomes. The distinction between science and religion has not yet been clarified as different abilities of the human mind to perceive everything outside the individual. The US National Academy of Sciences just published a report calling to enhance the STEM, meaning science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So the, STEM, so the National Academy of Sciences just published a report calling for the STEM education to be given more attention and that in English means more funding. So that includes the education from kindergarten to the end of the 12 year of obligatory schooling as it is in the United States. A recent paper in Nature possibly elucidates the distribution of answers from different European countries that we just looked at. 
the program is called European 2014 to 2020 Research Program Horizon 2020. And some of the interesting statistics that the nature authors comment about is, for example, that Poland, Slovakia, Bulgaria, and Romania secured from the Horizon 2020 a combined amount of 1 billion euros. 1 billion, just so you remember, has nine zeros after the one. The interesting contrast to that is that the United Kingdom received 12.1%. This translates into 7 billion euros of the Horizon 2020 funding. On the other hand, the United Kingdom average contribution to the overall European budget was around 11.4% of the total. So if we talk just about the percentages, they contribute 11.4, but receive 12.1. Science and technology do not benefit a person like me is the statement to which people were asked to respond, whether they agree to it or not. It turns out that 25% of Europeans agree with this statement, while 20% are indifferent. In the US, it is universally accepted that the scientific developments have helped everybody. And everyone, everybody means people who like to bicycle, to listen to music, have access to running water in their home, like to travel, eat well, use mobile phone, live longer by surviving critical diseases, and so on and so on. I will give you an interesting example that during the COVID-19, the original American inhabitants, also sometimes called original nations, have benefited with, uh, with the technology, despite their general rejection of the US culture and way of life. As I told you earlier, I am talking to you from Arizona, which is a southwestern state in the United States. The Navajo Nation lives in the corner area of the four states, basically uh, in the northeastern corner of Arizona. By June 11, 2020, the Navajo Nation had the largest per, capi per capita or per million infection rate in the U.S., surpassing any individual state. The tribal government requested assistance from the federal government, which is their right and it is the obligation of the federal government to help. So the Arizona National Guard, which is a state militia, was called in to assist the Navajo Nation in, carry, in caring for COVID-19 patients. On December 12, 2020, the Navajo Nation received the first doses of COVID-19 vaccine. Just as a comparison, the cancer patients received the medication three months later. According to this survey, more respondents in Eastern and southern member countries say that science and technology could improve everyone's life, but they think that it mostly improved the lives of those who are already better off. So 57% of Europeans agree with this statement, while 21% are indifferent. The indifference here is shown again as a yellow. This is a political issue that requires a great deal of attention for which we today do not have time. In the US, the, the distribution of scientific development and technological funds is a major job of senators and representatives while they're passing the laws. And it goes a little bit like this. If you support me on this project for my home state, I will support you on your project in your home state. Human resources in science and technology, in terms of the percent of the labor force, 
complement the people's attitude to science. Here we have such diagram for the European Union and some, some more Europe uh, toward the eastern uh, part. So dark indigo blue means high percentage of technical jobs. A little lighter blue means, of course, a little lower. And it goes all the way to the dark brown that indicates very low percentage of technical jobs. Looking at this diagram, we see that eastern and southern member countries have less technical jobs than northern and western countries as a percentage of working people. With more technical jobs per inhabitant, people are going to get higher standard of living, have more faith in science and technology, and learn more about the benefits of science. Another statement is science and technology could improve the, the environment, but they mostly help companies make money. 65% of Europeans agree with this statement, while 20% are indifferent. In the US, there are several agencies that are involved with monitoring the environment and recommending policy. We can start with NASA with its important programs at monitoring the spaceship Earth and predicting weather, to NOAA, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, they have many contractors, scientists, technologists, universities, who are working on the ways to decrease of particulates in the air, CO2, and car emissions. The US population generally believes that a global problem requires a global coordination. When a country ignores all international emission standards, the production costs are lower and they unfairly undercut other countries in price, resulting in an economic imbalance. This generates a global environmental and also a global economic problems. In some countries, people wear surgical masks all the time, and that was even before the COVID pandemic was used. They use those masks to filter out particulates in the air as an example of something that nobody controls, but, even bring, but it brings particulates in the air, I will also mention the volcanoes, and natural processes like Sahara, where the Sahara dust is raised into the air by the winds, and this dust is brought over the ocean to the Americas. I am pleased to know that most Europeans say that scientists are intelligent, reliable, moral, broad-minded, and collaborative. And people believe that science should be intelligent and honest. I think that this view is pretty much the same in the United States. I find that Europeans expect a lot from their scientists and I will not go into details of everything they expect from the scientists. I find it most challenging that scientists should be accountable for misuse of their discoveries, because a discovery is good, but what people do with the discovery may not be, and nobody can control that except that particular person. US scientists are people. They're also voters and usually conscientious humans. So they try to do the right thing. If they do not like the philosophy of their employer, they are free to and they often do change jobs. This is the freedom of choice in action. Another statement that was proposed to evaluate is that scientists spend sufficient time meeting people like me to explain their work. It turns out that 23% of Europeans agree with this statement, with the same percentage being indifferent. In the US, most people do not presume to judge the scientific work. Scientists visit schools out of their love for science. Sometimes when scientists work for the 
large government projects and for government agencies, they promo the promotion of science is part of their job. This is my very favorite statement in the whole review of uh, scientific attitudes that I have found. Scientific knowledge makes science scientists powerful and dangerous. So Europeans agree at 40% with this statement, while 23% are indifferent. According to the US population, the governments and groups are in position to be, and they often are recognized to be dangerous. So they are monitored to some degree by the government and by international institutions. But in terms of how people see a scientist, when people learn that I'm a scientist, they invite me to come to the children's class. Here are some examples of people who have been found dangerous historically because they are just a little bit different from everybody else. Women are sometimes considered crazy for knowing too much for their gender, for being secretive and being centuries ahead of his time, Leonardo da Vinci was kind of questioned. Here we have a genius who made another man rich. That is Nikola Tesla that comes from Croatia, right next to Slovenia. And Dr. James Lovelock proposed the idea of the environmental hypothesis Gaia. With this idea, he proposes that the Earth functions as a self-regulating system. For many people, this thought was too spiritual. So he is crazy for that. And now we have a, a man who's probably the best known for his scientific contributions and that nobody understands them because they, they are theory of relativity. And he's actually most known for his bare hair, bad hairdo. So a frequent, vis a, a frequent visit to a hair cutting salon would help his image a great deal. So in order to assess the quality of, res of the responses, people were asked how they engage with science and technology. So they say that the science popularization activities, documentaries, magazines, and books are good. They're also great entertainment for the inquisitive youth and for adults. And then this was followed by more details. How often do people watch documentaries, read science and technology related publications or books? So 59% of Europeans indulge in these activities, at least occasionally. In the US, science is considered TV entertainment immediately, immediately after online activities and computer games. It is popular for children who do not yet have intelligent phone. Science magazines and books are a favorite gift to people of all ages. I did a little bit of looking of scientific publications uh, and I checked with the all knowing no uh, Wikipedia and I have discovered that there are 33 magazines in local parentheses European languages because I include some that are not European and 44 in English in English speaking countries. Media availability in English is also a great advantage to the people in English speaking countries. Now, something for you to think about is that European Union publishes its science magazine in English, meaning you have to be pretty good in English in order to know what's happening in science. So that's an area that you can study about a little more. Apparently, we all talk about science and technology related issues with family and friends. At least Europeans do it. 55 of them do it. I just want to mention that this is a little bit questionable, uh, que questionable question because technology also means new products and 
the more you're conscientious about spending money on things that you may not necessarily need right now, the more you're going to talk about the new technology that comes on the market. So this one is not necessarily so much about technology as it is about technology. In the US, people talk with their family and friends mostly about sports, especially the American football, which is a physical competition with a strategic underlining. It's like chess, but most people don't understand it, so they just see its, its physical aspect. People love talking about politics, criticizing politicians, of course, economy, space accomplishment, Nobel Prizes, and exaggerated scientific accomplishments. How many times have we heard about somebody who has discovered a cancer uh, medication? So here we have my favorite uh, sports personality, Alvin Kamara. He plays for the Saints and he is faster than the speeding bullet. And he is also quite a nice human being from my point of view. And I am wearing his t-shirt, which is approved by NFL and therefore quite expensive. When he plays and he is very good at what he does, I feel like a winner. And that's how Americans identify with their sports. Now, an interesting question was, and it's an interesting question to consider uh, as a philosophical way of life. What exactly prevents people from engaging more with science? And the three, offers, three answers was offered as the most important. People say that they do not have enough time, they do not have enough knowledge, and they lack interest. A part of an American of a part of an American's self-image is that the US is the best in science. Considering space accomplishments, decreasing cancer mortality, and advances in biomedical research. Success in science is a personal success of every American. They watch science programs, listen to science programs on the radio while they commute to work, buy science books and magazines as birthday presents for their young and lovers. They are also at an advantage, of course, that the, lang that the language of science, of media and of entertainment is the language they master quite well, and that is English. So here we see a decrease since 2013 in the percentage of respondents who say that science prepares the younger generation to act as well-informed citizens and that it will create opportunities for future generations. I want to say that young people are discouraged also in the US. It is American dream that Every parent wants this for their children, that the children will achieve more prosperity than the parents did. So parents work hard and get, they, get, they have some prosperity, but they hope that the children will work less and have more prosperity. But in, interestingly, this dream seems to be coming to an end. It is not achievable anymore. For example, one of the great things that Americans believe they're entitled to is house by the time they're around 30 years they want to to at least move into their own house it turns out that in this year last year for the last 12 months the cost of housing has increased by 30 percent and the media are telling us that material shortages are to be blamed Two-thirds of respondents state that young people's interest in science is essential for future prosperity. This, I find this conclusion quite interesting. 
But in US, young people go study business administration in order to achieve high income and good job opportunities. In US, young people are exposed to science on TV, family outings, school activities. And the statement usually is that science is fun and young people are curious. Imagine if people of all ages enjoy science fiction in all forms. It turns out that currently, the NASA is discovering that most of the extrasolar planets that they are discovering are not quite our Earth. On the right side, we see our Earth with one of its beautiful blue lakes and with our beautiful blue sky. One of these super Earth, which is not particularly super, but maybe we will move there one day anyway, is located near a, a red star and it's very cold. You can see the ice over there. So we will see how soon we can move to one of our of, of the planets in a nearby solar system. But everybody knows about the exploration and search for, uh, for the planets outside our solar system. It's a dream that is in our genes. Respondents state that science prepares the young generation to act as well-informed citizen, citizens. As a matter of fact, 61% of Europeans agree with this statement while 21% is indifferent. This is a very high percentage of approval. In the US, the scientific preparation is not correlated with civic knowledge and civic responsibility. A disproportionately long, large number of scientists are actually from other countries. But in the statistics that we see, this thinking is also reflected in responses by France, Luxembourg, Belgium, Germany, and Netherlands. So what level of public involvement is appropriate when it comes to decisions about science and technology? 52 of the Europeans believe that the decisions should be made by scientists and politicians, while public should be kept informed. In US, civics or knowledge about their form of government is a part of patriotism taught to children before they ever, ever enter the first grade. They grow up with concepts of freedom, tripartite form of government, checks and balances, and representative democracy. In a mature representative democracy like the USA, the hard work of managing the country belongs to the executive branch of government, who may seek the, the advice of their experts. The legislative branch passes the laws that the executive government must execute. The judicial branch of the government interprets the laws. To most scientists, their work is actually pursuit of happiness. And when they're asked, they, got, they provide opinion, but they're generally not going to run a country and they don't even wish to do so. Here we have another interesting conclusion of the survey. It turns out that more than 50% of respondents say that the, gender that the gender equality in science would help ensure that we live in a fairer and more equal society. 73% of Europeans agree with this statement, while 17 are indifferent. Now, when you reduce this sentence to its bare minimum, it says gender equality ensures that we live in an equal society. And I would call this a truism. Why do not we have 100% respondents agree with this statement? In the US, the concept of equality was replaced with equity, but neither concept is well accepted. 
all the division of labor brought a high degree of prosperity. In US they have a saying, you don't fix something that is not broken. Respondents say that science and technology should consider needs of all people when developing new solutions and products. And a large amount of Europeans, that is 78%, agree with this statement, while 14% are indifferent. So I will mention something that is not really in agreement with what Europeans perceive. For example, the cancer-fighting chemotherapy includes dangerous cell mechanism interrupting processes. By studying those, we have learned a lot of other things that are important in other fields of bioengineering and biotechnology. In radiation therapy, also for cancer, the traditional x-ray x-rays pass through the tissue from all angles to destroy the cancer cells. So the US does everything on a grand scale. When developing a cancer cure, which was basically a national in initiative in 1971, exactly 50 years ago, everything was studied, including tree bark of some very special tree, which nowadays is very successful cancer medication. So that is part of economy of scale and large e economy in general. But something very interesting happened when the AIDS was introduced in the world society. Cancer research was diverted because of the pressure of the media and the civil society to save lives during the, COVID, during the HIV crisis. In fact, the first HIV cure was a failed cancer drug. US citizens say that researchers in China, US and Japan are head of researchers in the European Union at the rate of 54%, and that their country is the same level as those in the European states, which is 48%, which is kind of nearly the, the, at the same level. The U.S. scientists believe that their scientists are the best in the world. I mean, the U.S. citizens believe that their scientists are the best in the world. The government must increase funding at all times, or the U.S. will slide behind in, is the constant mantra that scientists repeat when they want funding for something big, a big institute, lots of funding for a specific research area, you know, the, the best request is supported by saying we cannot afford to fall behind. So when US does not produce enough scientists, they immigrate from other countries. On the other hand, US scientists greatly enjoy collaborating with all countries and especially with the Europeans because they're well prepared and they all speak excellent English and Americans are not very good at foreign languages, I'm afraid. Not their fault, they just haven't learned it. So we are all humans and we have a distribution of ideas, our truths, misconceptions and capabilities. I say that except for Alvin Kamara, Alvin is unquestionably the best. This is just the way Americans feel about their ideals. So science is an ever more perfect collection of knowledge that nature grudgingly lets us go after, after much prodding. We decided to live in groups, giving up some of our freedoms in exchange for the protection that is provided by the group. We found that the division of labor is an economically useful concept so each of us has more free time. We decided to delegate the heavy analytical thinking and empirical experiments and many years of arduous education to scientists in natural science and medicine. We feel free to criticize when we do not understand 
and when we are unhappy. So the question is, can we organize the path of knowledge to make sense for us? And I thank you very much for your attention. I wish I was there with you, but unfortunately, sometimes Mother Nature does things to us and makes us remember that she is still ahead of us and she can run our life. I have a few references that are mentioned here and I mentioned during my talk. And the last graph I show is that COVID is still bothering the humanity, but every time that it comes around, we are better prepared and we know how to respond to it. Thank you so much.